All right. Well, in case you don't recognize me, then my, my name is Jeff Anderson. <laughs> I'm Eric Eilertson, a security architect in Microsoft, and I get to use a clicker. So, so we, we just covered this. Uh, so we're here we're talking about OCP lock. So this is an industry-wide effort. Uh, we've got Google and Microsoft, uh, Samsung, Keoxia, and Solidine. Um, so we're going to talk about it's an effort. We talked about this in Lisbon six months ago, I think. Um, so look, I'm going to talk about what, what the problem is and what's the motivation for why we're trying to create this new effort is lock. Um, so with NVMe, we've got self-encrypting drives. Um, so the drive manages the encryption keys. Um, so one advantage here, it allows you know, a granular mapping of the keys to addresses um, and keys to users. So you could have multiple users mixed in using the same media. Um, and you could have a separate admin there. Um, but one of the problems here is like, what is a cloud service provider's threat model? Um, we are worried about nation state adversaries, perhaps stealing drives um, or buying the drives at end of life. So we have you know, sophisticated adversaries with money and time on their side. Um, so some problem we have with some implementations we've seen is the firmware in these self-encrypting drives. Uh, they may leak the media encryption keys. This could be in debug logs. It could be spilled out to memory. There's different places we've seen issues here. Um, some implementations of the crypto sanitize commands may not work. Um, so there's varying quality of implementations, different ways to glitch and attack some of these. Um, so we've, got, we've seen some issues with this. We can't fully trust the crypto erase that we've seen. So some of you may have heard of something called Calyptra before. Um, so you know, we were just talking about some of this. That's the internal root of trust for identity and measurement. So we thought was we're working through lock trying to figure out how do we solve these requirements. A lot of the needs that we need for securely managing encryption keys, Calyptra solves some of these already. So can we build on something that was in Calyptra? So. So uh, to build on the things that were provided by Calyptra, we are introducing OCP lock, layered open source cryptographic key management. Uh, we want to implement basically commonality of security specifically for storage devices. Calyptra is a root of trust for everyone. Um, everyone needs identity and attestation. Storage devices need a little bit more. Uh, so we have now uh, been integrated as part of the Calyptra project. So in Calyptra 2.1, we should begin the lock feature set. The goals of this feature set are to prevent leakage of media keys via the firmware vulnerabilities or side channels uh, to really securely bind the media keys to a set of uh, access keys that can be securely provisioned into the device, which you can then hold hostage. And if, they, if someone walks out with a drive and doesn't have an access key, there is no way to get out that data. And we're also looking at testing, uh, enabling quote unquote hard purge of secrets via erasing fused secrets instead of anything in like onboard flash or on a disk platter and to be able to attest to the fact that it has happened. Uh, the end result of all these goals is to give cloud service providers confidence that the drive is behaving properly and has a solid implementation and we can trust it to forget data and then we can uh, shred fewer drives because we are shredding a lot of drives and it's costing us money, it's creating e-waste. We don't want to do it, but we do have an obligation to our user data to protect it. This is a way to get uh, both goals. So there's a few interfaces that OCP lock defines. Uh, this deck focuses on two of them. Uh, there is a storage controller inside the drive, which is already exists and which will be uh, configured to integrate and speak with Calyptra. Uh, with the, the lock feature set. So there's an interface between those two components as well as between Calyptra and the drive crypto engine. That crypto engine is the thing that actually handles the media keys and does the line rate encryption and decryption of data as it flows in and out of the drive. Uh, now from the host perspective, when it sees a drive that supports lock, uh, existing protocols will be satisfied completely transparently. So you don't have to update all of the host software to comprehend it's a lock drive. Uh, there will be new features in Calyptra, in, in lock, that will require updates, that uh, will require updates to the specifications like TCG Opal uh, 
to expose those features to the host. Uh, there was a storage track talk earlier today where those features were discussed. And we'll have more material out there on that soon. So let's talk about MEK programming. So an MEK is a media encryption key. It gets programmed into the crypto engine and there it's used to encrypt decrypt data. Calyptra will be the only entity that has access to the media keys. It derives them and programs them directly. There's a secure physical channel between Calyptra and the crypto engine that does not route through any kind of controller firmware. Uh, so neither Calyptra firmware nor controller firmware will actually see these keys ever. Uh, the crypto engine holds a cache of the currently active keys. There's some metadata like which address range or NSID it's for and Clifter is responsible for managing this cache. How do we derive MEKs? So we're introducing the term partial MEK or PMEK. Each PMEK represents uh, an external authority who can decide whether to allow the MEK to be derived. Uh, each PMEK is generated by Calyptra and stored at rest by controller firmware. Calyptra itself doesn't have flash to remember things the controller firmware does, but before the PMEC is ever given back to the controller firmware, it is uh, symmetrically encrypted so that controller firmware never sees the raw PMEC. And for the entire lifespan of a given MEK, it is bound to a certain set of PMECs. Could be zero, could be one or more. And we also have a storage root key uh, that uh, is owned by Calyptra to basically provide a baseline level of security. Yes, uh, sorry, as I mentioned, PMEX are encrypted at rest. Uh, they are encrypted at rest using, in part, this externally injected access key. The access keys do not live inside the controller or device at all. They're never persisted. Uh, they have to be provisioned to the drive on every startup. So this access key is something you can hold off drive and know that if the drive is ever walks away, you don't have the, the access key and you carefully manage the access key that the media on the drive is safe because you can't decrypt the PMEC, which means you can't derive the MEK. The PMECs allow us to uh, provide a multi-project authorization property. What this means is that multiple different entities have to give their approval for an MEK to be allowed. Now, concretely, what might this look like? Well, we have a customer who has a VM who wants to talk to the drive and unlock it with their access key. Cool. So the customer wants the drive media to only be available once they provide their key. Commensurately, the cloud server provider wants to enforce their own uh, property as well, that unless some secret that the cloud service provider manages is released to the drive, the MEK is not available either, so that we can enforce a baseline level of security even if the customer chooses a really not random password. And all of the MEK access keys need to be provided before the MEK can be derived. So how do we map this to legacy Opal or Keypr.io flows? Well, we just won't have any PMEX because those uh, APIs don't recognize them. And so you can have MEKs that aren't bound to any PMEX and therefore don't need any access keys. Uh, in this case, we model the MEK as also being derived from a DEK, data encryption key, where that, from Locke's perspective, can be whatever. And so a concrete implementation would say, uh, for Opal, the DEK can be something that is derived from or decrypted by the user's CPIN. And so you provide all the same ACLs that you do today, except what you end up with is, and the controller side is not the MEK anymore, it's a DEK, which then flows into Calyptra to become the MEK. In Keypr.io, when you're injecting MEKs, under this model you'd actually be just injecting DEKs, which would then be permuted into the MEK. And this concept is actually comprehended and anticipated in the Keypr.io specification. We want very strong certainty that when these access keys are sent into the drive for PMAC decryption, that there is no intermediate layer between where they're held and where they're decrypted that could remember them or hold on to them or log them somehow. And so we want transport encryption. And so we're going to have Calypto generate CHEM key pairs. CHEM stands for key encapsulation mechanism. This is the new way to talk about asymmetric encryption, ECIES is one of these that builds off of uh, elliptic curves. 
uh, ML Chem or Kyber is a post-quantum version of that that Calypso 2.1 is going to support. We'll issue certificates for these Chem public keys to allow a validation authority off machine to ensure that when it's releasing an access key to a Chem public key that it only gives it to a legitimate drive. And then we do encryption and transit using the Chem. Uh, also, these Chems are in memory only. So if you yank the drive, the chem goes away, and any ciphertext that might have been stashed in the middle is useless. We support access key rotation. So you, know, you might not want an access key to live forever, so you can uh, provide the old and new access keys uh, to rotate from one to the other. And so internally, we'll just unwrap the old one, rewrap to the new one. And the controller needs to make sure that it forgets the old wrapped access key. If you don't trust the controller firmware to do that properly, then just don't rotate. Uh, we also support entropy injection. So Calyptra and uh, the controller occasionally generate random numbers, like generating chem key pairs, generating random PMAX, anything else the controller firmware might want to do. And so we want to provide a service to say, hey, here's some random numbers. Now, as a host, uh, uh, host environment or like a platform op operator, you might say, well, that's a nice device you have with a true random number generator. I want to make sure that I can contribute some more entropy to it, just in case there was something wrong with the implementation. And so we want to introduce a stir random API and say, just here's some entropy so that in the future, if we need to make a random number, it's extra random. Uh, crypto helpers. So if you're a controller firmware, you maybe want to use Calyptra for all of your FIPS approved crypto needs. Uh, there's going to be other crypto flows that are involved in Opal that Calyptra itself is not doing, like uh, deriving or decrypting things with a CPIN or permuting key par IO DE case before they go in. And so we want to support uh, uh, give some helpers that controller firmware can do these. So getting random data, AES GCM, AES key wrap, uh, HMAC KDF. So uh, that'll be quite the helper, we hope. Uh, hard cryptographic purge. Uh, this is under discussion still, but the idea is that the storage key, that storage root key we depicted earlier, could be rotated. Now it's stored in fuses, and so you can't rotate it too often. But the idea is that once you've wrote, like, blown all the fuses for the old one and programmed the new one, that it is much harder for a nation state adversary to invasively recover the old key versus if it was in somewhere like Flash or on a magnetic platter. Uh, so we would support multiple root key banks. Um, as I said, not too many because fuses are expensive, so maybe on the order of four or so. And so Calypto could erase one and program the next one. and attestation here. We want the controller, and this is something that we'd like drives to do in general, but especially here, we want the drive to be able to attest, did I undergo a crypto erase and am I still clean? So you could have two different parties. One of them does the crypto erase and another party somewhere else can verify that it happened. Uh, and Calypto is in a position to do this uh, with the storage root key rotation. So one thing back on that, on the you know, when we'd want to move the storage key forward to blow those fuses, to ratchet forward, that is this, we would do that when we would be shredding a drive today. So this buys us a few times where we can reuse these drives, uh, perhaps in place, perhaps resell them somewhere else, somebody else could buy them, secondhand market, but it's a time you would have shredded the drive, and this gives us the opportunity to try to reuse these and get some more life out of them. There are many times in a drive's lifespan you might erase it, like I'm transitioning from one logical entity to another. That could happen a lot of times and you don't really want to burn a fuse every time. But if you're like, okay, the drive's actually getting shipped, that only happens very few times in a drive's life cycle, and so, yeah. Okay, so for call to action. So we are releasing the 0.5 spec of the Calyptra lock. Um, so this is available. Should, is it available now? Uh, in a few weeks, it'll be In a few weeks, it'll be available. Um, so this will include the interfaces and the flows, the high, the high level requirements and the goals with some more detail in there. Um, and so the specification will live in, uh, just like Calyptra, specification will be in OCP with the implementation uh, under Chips Alliance. Um, so the, yeah. 
So if you'd like to get involved, you know, you can either, Chips Alliance is probably gonna be the best place to contribute to the development and the implementation of this. Um, and uh, these new PMAX with access keys, they don't really map to anything in Opal or Key.io, so to map that in a standard way, we're planning to engage TCG, so if you're interested in that angle of things, feel free to join us there. And last slide, okay, cool. Any questions? Hey Jeff, uh, quick question on making log like more generic. Any thoughts on other usages outside of storage encryption? That question has been asked before. Uh, can like are there other usages for secure key management outside of a storage device that holds media? And there certainly could be. Uh, we'd need to see concretely what they are. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah could, there's been talk about the, the interface for releasing the key once we've unwrapped or derived a key and we push that out to, in the storage case, it's an XTS engine, but there's no reason that couldn't be some other type of AES or GCM engine if you wanted to do another, maybe it's a storing object store or maybe it could be a TLS type connection if you were to do a, a NIC offload or something like that. So there's, it's on, the, it's on our mind, but it hasn't been a key priority right now. Yeah, hi. Um, thanks for the talk. I may have missed it, but uh, how is host injection of key material handled in this kind of architecture? Uh, I hope this answers your question. Uh, so key material being the access key used to decrypt a PMEC and therefore authorize a, an MEK to be derived. That is, is that what you were asking about? No, I'm talking about what's already supported in the NVMe spec. So yeah, self-encrypting drives which this clearly supports, but then you also have uh, <clears throat> cases that you see, like for instance in PC environments where the operating system may drive uh, encryption of data before it's stored on a, uh, you know, as it, related to how it's stored on the hard drive, so. So pre-encryption of data is something, you know, we do as a layer of defense, mm -hmm. um, so this would be uh, a part of that. Now, if you pre-encrypt the data, uh, and you want to sanitize the drive still, you still need to touch the drive in some way to uh, you know, make sure that the keys are gone. And this is giving us more confidence that the drive can actually forget a key when we need it to. Okay, great, right, thanks. All right, thanks very much. <laughs>